94 MPs are said to have not passed their O-level examination. How does this impact Sri Lanka's governance? Find out on News Matters. Professor M.O. A. De Souza, a political scientist, addressing a press conference in Colombo recently, revealed that of the 225 MPs in Parliament, 94 have not passed their GCE O-level examination. He also said there were only 25 graduates in the current Sri Lankan legislature. He made this revelation in the wake of recent pandemonium in Parliament, which culminated with the suspension of MP Dinesh Gunawardana. The Sri Lankan legislature has often come under fire for the unruly behaviour of MPs. We all know about the time some of the MPs decided to sleep over in Parliament and we also know of the instances at which parliamentarians have resorted to physical assault in the well of the House. At a different event in Colombo recently, Professor Bellan Vimalaratan Thera, a senior Buddhist monk, lamented that the current Sri Lankan Parliament is no different to a mental asylum. Are these pronouncements true? It is clear the statements by Professor Zoisa and Vimalaratan Thera encapsulate the current state of affairs in Parliament. There's no rule to say that only graduates can enter politics or that only graduates make good parliamentarians. There are a variety of leaders in every part of the world who have made excellent statesmen without any kind of tertiary education. Sri Lanka's first Prime Minister D.S. Senanayaka, for instance, a statesman par excellence, was not a university graduate. It is not the lack of education that cripples the Sri Lankan parliament. It is the lack of skill and resolve. Instead of doing the job they are entrusted to do, policy making and leading, Sri Lankan politicians are busy selling off their car permits, mining sand illegally and doing all kinds of other business which costs the public bear. A single day's parliamentary sitting costs the Sri Lankan taxpayer 4.6 million rupees. A parliamentarian's pay package is 54,285 rupees. A cabinet minister is paid 65,000 rupees. Apart from this, all MPs are given a transport allowance of 10,000 rupees, which is normally used for the MP staff, an entertainment allowance of 1,000 rupees, and a telephone allowance of 50,000 rupees a month. In addition, they are also entitled to a generous fuel allowance. A cabinet minister also has a number of perks and privileges. They are entitled to ministry vehicles, which fuel bills are borne by the public. And this is aside from the duty-free vehicles, bar permits, other direct or indirect privileges enjoyed by parliamentarians of all hues. MPs are also paid an allowance of 2,500 rupees every time they sit in Parliament where they are provided with food and beverage. It is abundantly clear that the collective underperformance of the Sri Lankan lawmakers comes at a massive cost to the public. And since it is the people who elect these leaders to office, it begs the question, when will people change enough to elect the right kind of people to office? Sri Lanka's post-independence political history of the past seven decades indicate it is high time to re-elect the people before re-electing politicians. Join us for another segment of News Matters on Tuesday. I am Royal Raymond. Get the Daily News app free on your mobile phone. Visit apps.lakehouse.lk and download today. Daily News. Be better informed.